How do spiteful behaviors evolve? In nature, the actions that organisms take can affect other organisms around them. These behaviors are classified based on the direct fitness consequences they create for the actor and the recipient. In other words, is the behavior good or bad for the organism doing it? Is it good or bad for the organism receiving the effect? Assuming the behavior is positive for the actor, it's called mutualism when it also benefits the recipient, and selfishness when it hurts the recipient. These two are easy to see why they would evolve. On the other hand, if the behavior is negative for the actor, it's called altruism when it helps the recipient, and spite when it hurts them. It's a bit harder to understand why these behaviors evolve. In this video, we're going to dive into the theories explaining spiteful behaviors, and we're going to take a look at a few examples seen in nature. A popular explanation for altruism, called Hamilton's rule, can be used for spite as well. It says altruism occurs when R times B is greater than C. R stands for the relatedness of individuals, which is a measure of how many genes they share, B stands for the benefit of the recipient, and C stands for the cost of the actor. So when the relatedness times the benefit is greater than the cost, there's an evolutionary pressure for altruistic behaviors. With spite, this formula works when both the benefit B and relatedness R are negative values. The B is obviously negative here since that's the point of spite, but relatedness has typically been thought of as a ratio between the actor and recipient's genes, which isn't negative. Alan Grafen's geometric view of relatedness can explain how relatedness can be negative. He argues that relatedness is not just a ratio between actor and recipient, but involves the ratio of their genes compared to the local population. I'm drawing the actor and recipients here as people, and the population as circles. The amount of blue represents the proportion of the actor's genes. When the recipient has more than the population's average of the actor's genes, then this recipient's survival to reproduction helps the actor increase his gene frequency in the population. But if the recipient has less than the average frequency in the population, him surviving and reproducing lowers the average amount of the actor's genes in the population. So up here is positive relatedness, and down here is negative relatedness. These are the situations where spite can occur. If the actor does something spiteful to this recipient, it's negative for both of them, but all of the actor's brothers and sisters sharing his genes will receive the benefit. A great example in nature is seen in fire ants. In a recent Evo series lecture, Ines Dawson outlines this concept very well. Check out this clip. In essence, if we go back um, to this colony situation. When you have a big uh, a queen that is homozygous, if they were founding a colony in the wild, they would only form a monogyne colony, which means there's a single queen, um, there's no space for the queens, no space for the workers, there's a sole foundress, that queen, and that's it. Um, and in essence, when one of these queens grows up in a polygyne, colony, when she's getting ready to lay eggs, the workers that have um, that are heterozygous, that is they have the big B and the little B, they are able to clearly smell that she is ready to lay eggs and that she is homozygous, so there must be something about that that is linked to their cuticular hydrocarbon profile that we talked about earlier, and they know that maybe she has intentions of setting up a monogyne colony or who knows, we don't actually know because it triggers aggression in these workers and they actually dismember the queen, which is obviously quite spiteful behaviour because it's quite costly to dismember an ant and also the queen ant doesn't get to lay eggs. Um, but that is one of the best examples of spite we've got in the animal kingdom. And if you think about it, it is indirectly favouring all of those that are heterozygous for the big bee, little bee. Another example is seen in many types of bacteria. They produce bactericin, an antimicrobial chemical that attacks other bacteria. This is costly to themselves, sometimes even killing the cell that releases the chemical, and costly to the bacteria around them. But almost always, the more related bacteria are immune to the bacteriocin. So these bacteria are spiting the less related bacteria around them so their relatives have a greater chance to spread their genes. The third example I want to get into is seen not just in ants, but most hymenoptera and species. That's bees, wasps, and ants. Ines provides an excellent explanation in another one of her videos. For instance, the hymenopterans, which are the ants, the bees, the wasps, are haplodiploid, which means that unfertilized eggs develop into males, and fertilized eggs, which contain twice the amount of genetic information, develop into females. 
This leads to interesting relatedness values between relatives and explains the conflict and strange behaviour observed in some haplodiploid societies. For instance, the relatedness between workers is greater than between a worker and their own offspring, and much greater than between a worker and their nieces and nephews. This has led to both worker sterility, whereby workers opt out of reproducing in favour of raising more of the queen's eggs, and also to worker policing, where workers murder the offspring of other workers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the Evo Seminar series where we discuss a bunch of different topics relating to evolution.